Hello and welcome to another computer science video. In this video we're going to look at organization and structure of data which is one of our chapters in the A-level computer science specification. We're going to get stuck straight in today so first let's look at what fields, records and files are. A field is usually a single piece of data and records are a collection of related fields and then files are a collection of related records. And I'll be using these words throughout this video interchangeably. So make sure that you're comfortable understanding what these things are. Now one thing to point out about records is that they can be either fixed or variable length. A fixed length record means that every record in our file is exactly the same size. And this has its own advantage. We know the start and end of every record because they're all the same size. We can also calculate how many records fit in one file. The disadvantage to this is that we actually waste space if we don't quite fill the record. We have to pad it out to the exact size because everything has to be the same. So what about variable length records? Well, these are usually used in serial and sequential files, but we'll get onto that in just a second. They accommodate data stored in each field, so this will accommodate for different data types. The advantage here is that there is no wasted space. The only problem is, is that if we want to find anything, we have to start at the start of the file and work our way to the end. Usually, the fields in these records are separated by a comma, and we can go through the file and separate each field by its commas. But obviously, this takes a bit more processing. So now let's have a look at our different files. We have serial files, sequential files, index sequential files, and direct or random access files. The first one we're going to look at is serial files. They are the simplest type of file. They use variable length records, and records are chronological. They are not sorted. So whatever comes into the file first, gets put at the start. The data that comes in is appended to the end of the file. There is no specific place for the data as it comes in. Looking at the next type of file handling, we have sequential files. The records in sequential files are stored and accessed in key sequence order. So each piece of data has a corresponding key. It's easier to program than index sequential files, but we're going to look at those just after this. Sequential files have fewer memory overheads. That means that they take less memory to store than index sequential files. And the key difference between sequential files and serial files is that in sequential files, records are inserted in the correct position. They're not appended onto the end of the file. In order to add a record into the file, we copy all of the data across to a new temporary file. And then at the point of insertion where we want to add the new record, we add it in. And then we copy across the remaining portion of the old file into the new temporary file. And then we delete the old file and rename the new one this means that our new file contains all the correct data with the new data in the correct place where we need it in our file. And deletion is the same process. We copy across all the data into our new temporary file that we want to keep and then we skip the thing that we want to delete and then copy over the remaining data into our new file and then rename our new file, delete the old one and then it looks like in our file we have all the data that we wanted apart from the record that we wanted to delete. So really, it's not actually deleting a record, it's more not copying it across. So looking at our third file type, we've got index sequential files. Records here are stored in a similar way to sequential files with a key. However, records are stored in order of that key in the file. The records themselves are normally stored in organized blocks and the index points to the start of a particular group or block. And this means that it's faster to search. If we start at the start of the block, then we do a sequential search through the block to find the record that we're looking for. And this means that instead of searching 
every record in the file, we just jump straight to the block and start searching that. The only problem is, is that as we add and delete, it's difficult to keep track of the records as the pointers are constantly getting deleted and added in. And this can become very confusing, but there is one major advantage to using index sequential files, and that's the use of multi-level indexes. If I take a simple index of zero to a thousand, I can split that into blocks of zero to 250, 251 up to 500, and 501 to 750, for example, and 750 to 1,000. Then I can add in more indexes, so up to 1,000 to 2,000, and 2,000 up to 3,000. And I can group all those by one single identifier, which is 3,000. And having multi-level indexes allows me to have indexes within indexes, and that speeds up searching even more. Think of this like a multi-story car park. Instead of you saying, I'm parked in the car park, you can tell me which level of the car park that you're on, and that narrows down the search. And that's the benefit to having multi-level indexes used in index sequential files. However, again, this does add complexity. So there's a trade-off between performance and difficulty to implement. So let's have a look at our final file. This one is random access, or sometimes called direct access as well. The point of this is you're gonna take some data, use that data in what we call a hashing algorithm, and that will produce an index based upon the data that you have given it. Every time you give the hashing algorithm the data, it will produce the same index for that data. And that makes retrieval quite simple. And the benefit to having random or direct access files is that we can jump to the record directly. And direct access files are split up into blocks. Each block contains a fixed number of records and the programmer will design the hashing algorithm to generate the start position of the blocks in the file. Once we reach the start of a block, then we would use a serial search to find the record we are looking for. So let's consider an example. We've got two items of data, one's Bob and one's John. That's what we want to store in our file. The hashing algorithm is the worst hashing algorithm in the world. It just uses the length of somebody's name or the data to produce the index location. So Bob and John both have the same number of characters, which is three. That means we're gonna store them at the third block position in the file. We can't store two items of data in the same block. And this is where we use the overflow. And we place the item of data at the end of the file. And this means that we're not overwriting data and we're not losing any data in the long run. However, if the overflow is used, then in order to find the data later on, we need to use a linear search to find it. And that can often be quite slow. The other option is to create a new file altogether that contains more blocks. And then you could rehash all the data into the new blocks using a new hashing algorithm. However, this is very costly in memory and in terms of time. So choose wisely. Depending on what's more efficient for you, there are two methods of overflow that you need to be aware of for the A-level. One is called progressive overflow, which states that if the location is occupied, then we use the next available location to us. If the end of the file gets reached, then we wrap around and start searching from the beginning again, looking for a free space to put the data. The other method is by using flags. You can put a flag on the original block and then move the data into a designated overflow and then we would linear search. And that's what we were talking about before. So just to recap there then, all we've looked at in this video is looking at what fields, records and files are. We looked at variable and fixed length records and then we looked at the four different file handling methods that we need to be aware of. And they are serial, sequential, index sequential and direct or random access. I do hope you found this video useful and that you watch the other videos in the series. Thank you very much and I'll see you again soon.